Hello and Namaste to everyone. Uh, first of all, I'd want to extend my profound gratitude to the FAIR team. I must also say that the entire FAIR experience has been a developing one and it has made me more aware of my identity. You must be wondering um, why I have a t-shirt on my right and a pair of jeans on my left. So, have you ever wondered how much resources go into manufacturing these? I'm sure you will be surprised to know that to produce per kg of cotton, more than 3000 liters of water is consumed with other manufacturing processing added to the stacks. Similarly, around 2700 liters of water so go, also go into producing a single t-shirt and 7500 to 10,000 liters for a pair of jeans. Surprisingly, the fashion industry is considered to be the second most polluting industry globally. According to the UNCTAD, the fashion sector uses over 93 billion cubic meters of water annually, which is enough to supply 5 million people with all their requirements and almost half a million tons of microfiber, same as 3 million barrels of oil, which is currently dumped into the oceans every year. A significant factor in climate change is the production of textiles. It generates an estimated 1.2 billion tons of CO2 equivalent annually, which is greater than the sum of all international flights and the ocean transportation. Now, why is it necessary to look into these stats and why should we care? I believe that the world's view on climate action as one of the eight goals could be traced back to the historical developments that have taken place addressing climate change. For example, just like how a common person doesn't visit a doctor until the underlying health condition aggravates to become cancer. Uh, uh, aggravates to become cancer, the phenomena of climate change and its consequences went unnoticed until recently. Never have climate change concerns been urgent until now, except for a few capitalist authorities who still disregard its existence. The importance of cancer diagnosis to be able to treat it makes the recognition of world climate change history and the policy measures that follow a corrective course of action. Beginning in the late 19th century in the New York City, uh, it had around 2500 tons of horse manure produced every day by the 200,000 horses used to transport goods and services. The amount of methane produced due to horse manure piles was almost insurmountable. Bringing automobiles and electric cars to the street brought a solution to this manure problem, only to give birth to yet another problem of pollution. Industrial revolution and the era thereafter only added fuel to the fire. It was not until the 1970s that the first World Environment Conference took place in Stockholm, Sweden. Surprisingly, it took almost 100 years to diagnose cancer, which is nothing but the climate change and its ramifications in the human body, which can be metaphorically compared to the Mother Earth. The international agreement widely accepted is the United Nations Convention on Climate Change. In the late 19th century, climate policy changes emphasized mostly global warming and controlling greenhouse gas emissions, which took a political turn later. In 2019, a child activist named Greta Thunberg became the face of urgent climate action and led to a massive movement towards saving our planet. Also, Miss Universe 2021 emphasized the need to take action and talk less as every action she said, and I quote, could kill or save nature. To prevent and protect, she said, is better than to repent and repair. As a step toward climate action, which is SDG 13, as well as one of the eight one goals, I'd like to carry forward my discussion on sustainable fashion. I remember how during the fair journey, we started with redefining concepts like sustainability, well-being, and that was the time I learned how redefining did not necessarily mean playing with the technical definition of the terms, but trying to understand the existing one more finely. Sustainable fashion for me stands for production and consumption processes that A. Promotes equitable and better working condition for workers B. Promotes environmental good C. Promotes local community and their artwork D. Focuses on quality garments lasting for longer durations instead of variety or quantity produced 
on the contrary as defined by the report published by ellen macarthur foundation a new rapid fashion business model that has emerged since the 1980s is known as fast fashion it involves more new clothes collection being released every year quick turnaround times and frequently lower prices now this business model depends on being able to respond quickly to consumer demand by introducing new products additionally the amount of clothing consumed worldwide is expected to increase by 63% by 2030 from 62 million tons to 102 million tons or more than 500 billion additional t-shirts produced given the increase in world population the un estimates that by 2050 it may need approximately three planets worth of natural resources to support existing lifestyles according to a survey which was conducted in 2016 on corporate leadership on corporate modern slavery 77% of the uk's top 71 retailers said modern slavery was likely to occur at some point in their supply chains women and girls make up the majority of the world's craftsmen and garment workers the majority of whom get far less than a living wage constantly endure horrible working conditions and live in poverty most work long hours often 6 or 7 days a week and there have been complaints of burnout and physical inability to work through their 30s according to industry all few garment workers have access to union representations in many nations that produce clothing there are also inadequate or non existent collective bargaining institutions every year according to rap estimates euro 140 million worth of clothes in the uk ends up in landfills looking at the current scenario the following steps could be taken by different stakeholders to address the climate hazard posed by the fashion industry so starting with the producers and the policy makers upstream activities particularly energy intensive raw material production preparation and processing are responsible for more than 70% of the emissions the remaining 30% is produced by downstream processes like delivery packaging retail sales usage and end of use a 24 million ton reduction in ghg emissions might be achieved through reduced production and manufacturing waste this is based on the assumption that better design and contemporary cutting techniques will reduce waste in the stage of garment manufacture and reduce waste cost during the transition from fibers to textiles improvements in raw material production preparation processing efficiency can account for about 45% of savings while the switch to renewable energy sources will account for 39% by converting from coal to electric boilers the remaining 16% may be met as a result one major tool that could cut emissions by about 158 million tons in 2030 is reduced over production about 40% of clothing is currently being sold at a discount due to over production investments in technology which are used for forecasting demand allows the producers as well as the consumers to track the source of their products and enabling stock management can aid in the process on the other hand a coalition of businesses labor organizations and ngos for example uh, the ethical trading initiative works to advance respect for workers rights throughout the world the eti based code of labor practice which is based on the ilo norms is an agreement made by all corporate members of eti international labor organization now eti determines the best practices that businesses can use to deploy the base code throughout their supply chains now increasing the product lifetime is also an effective means of lowering resource consumption as a 6 month extension of the garment life can lower carbon waste and water footprints by about 20 to 30% circular uh, fashion business models include uh, repairing renting refurbishing reselling and they also significantly help in reducing ghg emissions now what role can the consumers play so firstly buying the local artisan made garments which also promotes the local economy or purchasing second hand clothes as for example one used purchase reportedly saves 22 kg of co2 3040 liters of water and 1 kg of garbage when compared to a new one in addition a 2019 study discovered that 
41% of second-hand clothing purchases in China and 65% of purchases of second-hand apparel in the US and UK effectively avoided the purchase of new ones. I'd like to share my experience that I have been thrifting for nine years now and it has been, it was out of variety initially and uh, getting the variety at lower prices. But as I got more aware about the environmental consequences that the production or the manufacturing of these textiles have, I think secondhand buying is a better option. Nextly, avoiding the practice of bracketing, which is ordering clothes in different sizes and colors online only to try and return the ones that do not fit you. Kindly do not engage in practices like bracketing as savings of 12 million tons of GHG emissions could result from minimized returns. Through a combination of technological advancements in predicting the size and fit and consumer behavioral shift to decrease purchases with the purpose to return, the rate of e-commerce returns will decrease from 35 to 15%. Talking about business models which work on the concept of reselling or buying and selling secondhand goods, the examples that we can look at are Poshmark India and Kiabza as these are the online marketplaces facilitating buying and selling of pre-owned fashion. Now what their influencers can do? So the fashion influencers can play their part with promoting and investing in sustainable fashion over various social platforms reaching and awareing the masses. Thank you so much.